Hey guys, this is Mike Tarala with Click, and in this video, I would like to introduce you to the Web File Connector, which is available in ClickSense in the editions ClickSense Cloud Basic, ClickSense Cloud Business, ClickSense Enterprise, and ClickSense Desktop. Now, I took some careful consideration when preparing for this video because Web File can be perceived as very simple, but there's a few things you need to know. And I'm going to cover that throughout the video. So let's jump right into it. Now, the Web File Connector basically just allows you to access any file format that ClickSense recognizes, but instead of from a folder location or a network location on a drive path, it will allow you to use a URL via HTTP or HTTPS. However, this method is unsecure. In other words, uh, no credentials or authentication, for example, is passed. Now you could pass it in the URL, but it's really not that secure. And I will give you a few examples of that. Basically, I have an app here called the Sega Master System Collection. Now, uh, if you follow some of my content, you know I have a, a love for video games as well, especially uh, retro video games, uh, game systems and consoles that are 20 plus to 30 years old. Um, so what I did is I used web file against some online pricing data along with my own personal collection of uh, video games for the Sega Master System. So this is a completed app. I'll touch base on this a little bit later, but I want to really show you how to use the web file. So you'll notice that there's a resource available called Game Value Now, and I'm on the Master System page. And you can see that there's a variety of different items laid out here. But I'm particularly interested in this table of data that has the title of the Sega Master System game, as well as the pricing information. Loose, basically meaning if the cartridge is available, but no box or no manual. And then complete, basically if you have the cartridge, the manual, and the box. And I'm interested in just these columns. And that's where I created this simple app to kind of see what the value of my collection would be. And we can cover that a little bit later. I have this data available here, and I'm going to access that via ClickSense Cloud and the Web File Connector. So I'm just going to copy that URL, and we're going to go into this app that I created already but has no data in it. And then I'm going to click Add Data. And then you'll see we have the web file connector. Now, I am a Click employee, so I have access to other connectors in ClickSense Cloud. Um, you may not. So if you're ClickSense Cloud basic users, you probably will just have the web file connector. Keep in mind this is available in Enterprise and Desktop as well. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to enter the URL. And I'm going to give it a name, and we're just going to call it uh, Sega Master System Pricing, and click Create. And what this will do is it'll automatically parse the information. It recognizes the format as HTML, and basically it looks for the table tags that are in the web page or in the stream that comes back, and then it references those particular tags as uh, reference numbers. So, for example, no data is coming back here, and that first one. If we choose the next one, you can see Master System Game Pricing Chart. It's basically, you know, using some of this information here, okay, and it's pulling back what it can see. So you can see here's one of those tags. So if we go back, and you could choose which ones you want. In this case, I know I want uh, at 11, and you can see here's the chart and pricing information. So at this point, I don't want the row number and I don't want new and I don't want graded values and for complete I call that CIB complete in box so basically I'm just getting the title I'm getting back the uh, loose price and the um, complete in box price then I click add data and now I have my table here now I want to add more data to this and I'm going to use my local data file and you can see here's my attached files and we have drop file here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, go into my data file, go to C, sample, and there is my Sega game CSV. Okay, and there's my titles. So you can see we have embedded uh, header names here. So I can select field names, embedded field names, and now we have name, quantity, box, and manual. Okay, we don't need quantity. I keep track of the duplicate titles that I may have. We're just going to use box, manual, and name. So name being the game title, uh, box indicating if there is a box, and manual 
indicating if there is a manual. And then we could use this later to identify a um, complete inbox price or a loose price. And I'm going to add that data. And now I'm going to use the wizard in the visual data preparation. And you can see here, it automatically associates the data from the pricing chart from the web file connector using title, and then the data from my local database, so to speak, using name. And then we load that data into the app, and we can click Edit the Sheet. Now at this point, I can start creating my visualizations. So let's do a KPI, and let's do a count on the number of titles. And we have 129 game titles. So that's 125 titles that exist in the pricing chart, plus four titles that exist in my database that uh, are not in the pricing chart. Okay. Um, we could also, let's get the total price of cost in box and let's grab another KPI object, add that measure and let's do some cost in box. Okay. So we have $4,000, so to speak from the pricing charts. Now, if we wanted to see the value of what my titles were worth, what we can do is we can do a little set analysis on this. Okay, if you're not familiar with set analysis, I have a video on it. It's a powerful expression syntax that basically allows you to uh, restrict your measures to a set of data uh, based off of the expression uh, values you put in. And I'll give you a quick example of that. We're gonna edit the expression. Okay, and I'm just gonna put in the syntax now. I'm not going to explain the syntax. As I mentioned, there's a video on it. But we're basically going to say restrict the cost in box if a uh, manual, and you can see it automatically recognizes that. And we're going to say if the manual value is yes. And then what we can do right here after that is put another comma. And then we can put another parentheses. And we can say, what was the other thing we had in there? Box. So where box is equal to yes, okay? And we're gonna click apply, and we can see $399.40, okay? We can change that to money, 42 cents. So out of the um, titles that I own, I own a estimated value based off of that pricing website of $400. Now I can copy this, control C and control V, and then we can go back here and we can say, do we have the manual? Uh, let's say no, but I do have the box. Yes. And then that would be considered what's called a loose price. So we're going to use the loose value here. Okay. So anytime you don't have one of the other items, it's considered loose. And we have $155 in um, titles that are loose. Okay. And then obviously, if you wanted to do a, uh, you know, a, a total value, you know, we can take this value and this value, for example, and just add them together and $554 total value. Now, I don't recall how much I paid for these over the years. So if I'm in the profit or, you know, or, or, or negative, I don't know. But that's just a little fun way to show you how I can use the web file from that price charting information and combine it with my own local data. Okay. Um, now let's get into... Um, a couple more things about web file. And then at the end, I'll kind of show you the completed application that I, I built. So here's some other things you should need to know about web file. So if I go into, let's say the, uh, data manager. Okay. And we're going to add more data and I'm going to create another web file connection. I want to show you what could happen. Okay. So here is another website that I have that has a customer table in the form of HTML. Okay. It's my Amazon box here. Now watch what happens when I go back here, put the URL in and just give it a name. It's going to work, but I'm, I got a point here. Okay. It shows the file format as HTML and it brings back the table. Okay. Well, I did a lot of preparation for this and what happened was, is I was going to use my own website here. I have mtrollo.com that I use just as a simple website. So I'm going to copy that URL and let's add another web file connector. I'm going to paste it in the URL and just give it some name and click create. Watch what happens. Not acceptable. So this mtrollo.com is a shared host uh, from GoDaddy. 
and I have the ability to put files up there, but for some unknown reason right now, it will not allow me to parse that HTML table. And it might have to do with the content type that's set on the server. I really don't know. I have a question out to my uh, products team to understand what specifically would cause this to fail. Um, so stand by for that answer either in the comments or I will update the blog post or um, where this video is posted with that explanation. So the point of this is that not every URL or file reference will work when you're trying to access data via this approach. Okay, so why it might not work, I don't know yet. So keep that in mind. Um, here's another example also via uh, FTP. You could use FTP, okay? And you'll notice that I have, and again, this is just a sample account, so I don't mind sharing it. You have to do the inline credentials. So I have a user account, FTP user at mtorallo, and then the password, and then the location to the resource. You could use FTP as well. Okay, so if I go here, and I'm just going to paste this in here, and then click Create. Watch what happens when it comes back. It recognizes the format as XML, and you get an invalid parameters because of the way the content type or something that is being sent back to the system. I just changed this to HTML because I know it is HTML. And then you can see via FTP that the data comes back. Okay, so you're not limited to HTTP, you can use FTP, but you need to have the um, either required settings or, or uh, credentials passed along the URL if you want to use FTP. Okay, now, the last thing I do want to say before we just go into some of the, uh, the fun analysis of the video game data is if all else fails, you can use the REST connector. Now, the REST connector is only available in desktop, enterprise, and ClickSense Cloud Business. But the REST connector, I have also done a number of videos on this, and there's a number of resources out here. This will allow you to use various authentication. Uh, you can pass tokens as parameters. Uh, so you could use like OAuth uh, token authentication if you wanted to. Um, so if you had a secured resource with data, um, you could use the REST connector. Now, keep in mind, um, you could do this with simple CSV files that come back, JSON, JSON data that comes back, um, or you can use the RESTful API of the data source you're trying to get at, okay? So there's a couple of different tips and tricks you can use the REST connector for, but it's really designed to use the RESTful API of the type of target data you're after, okay? And check out the other video resources that we have available on this if you're interested. Okay, so I felt it was important to kind of show you those in case you run into those areas, you are aware of it, and you can know that um, we have it covered and that we're addressing, and at least you go into this with a little bit more knowledge. Okay, so to wrap up the video, I'm just going to use the finalized application I created here um, just to give you an example of where some of this analysis comes in. So as I mentioned, uh, there's a total of 129 titles. Uh, there are four that are not in the list. Uh, the total game value is $4,213 that is available within the price chart. Uh, total game value of loose is $1,772. And then there is the potential additional value for me. In other words, the other titles, I own 46 of them, but there are 83 I don't own, which is a potential value currently of $3,502. Uh, my game value is $562, 405 complete in box, and 157 uh, as box only. And then these visualizations here um, basically would give you an indication of what type of cartridges I should buy if I don't own them. So, for example, this scatter plot here, the ones that are colored in orange are the ones I own, the ones in blue. I don't own, but you want to look at the price difference between what a cart would be loose versus what a cartridge would be complete. And the reason for that is that you could buy a cart loose at a low price, find a box by itself cheaply or a manual by itself cheaply and then combine them and then you could make a pretty decent profit for some of these um, titles. Like So for example, you want to buy a cartridge that falls within the loose price very low but has a high um, complete price. So for example, like Enduro Racer here, I could buy the cartridge loose for $16, but complete it's worth $85. So if I find the box for $10 and maybe the manual for cheap and then sell the completed complete in box, I could make a pretty decent profit, right? So these are the pretty nominal ranges. You know, then for example, there are other cartridges over here which really 
aren't worth much complete or loose so for example great football it's loose cartridge is two dollars complete it's four it would cost me more to buy the case and the manual for example so that's not really much of a you know a good profit margin right there same here seven and eleven so to speak so trying to find the ones that are in this particular area um, are relatively you know where you can get 50 percent or more margin on you know other titles like you know for example michael jackson's moonwalker complete 57 loose 22 we start to move up and then it starts to get you know where complete 71 loose 39 so you kind of get the point if you're familiar with the correlation between the the items on the scatter plot this one here power strike 60 and 143 and then golden axe loose 92 complete 226 dollars and then James Buster Douglas, loose 122, complete 402 dollars. I mean, if you can find a box again, depending on the availability of the box and, and the manual, uh, this chart will help you identify which cartridges you could buy loose, and then which ones you could sell if you you know had the additional pieces for that. And this chart does the same thing. You kind of want to look for the dots that are halfway um, between, where you can see the different profit margin on which cartridges you might actually buy loose and then resell complete okay other than that that's all i really wanted to go i know this video was longer than usual but had some good information in here um what i will do is also segment the indexes people could jump to different areas um, i'll place that in the description of the youtube link uh, other than that uh, take a look at these other resources on clicksense and clicksense cloud uh, if you have any questions, please post them where this video is posted, either YouTube and the Click community. And please uh, like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.